viewers welcome back to the moose mobile auto repair channel and today i have a 2014 volkswagen tiguan and it has the two liter tsi engine and today we are going to be doing the cooling system service drain and fill of the system now this cooling system is a self regulating system so it's a self bleeding system and so after we are done doing the drain and fill we are going to fill it up and i'm going to show you on uh, on how to bleed it afterwards so i'm just underneath the vehicle now we have to remove the the skid plate so we have uh, some t25 torx screws that we need to take off and there's two in the back that are t45 screws or bolts so we're going to take off the screws now then you have to do the same thing on the other side there are some torque screws here uh, uh, as well So over here in the back, we have a T45 bolt or screw. So we're, we're going to take this one off and the one over there too. So this whole piece, it just uh, comes off, unclips. And then you have some more Torx bolts or screws hiding here. want to support the skid plate when you remove the last one and then it uh, should uh, uh, pull out. There's one last one here. Just take note that when you install this back, uh, these two uh, pieces here are lined up inside inside here. So now, uh, normally you would be able to drain at the radiator on some vehicles, but this one doesn't have uh, a drain valve or a pet clock valve on the radiator uh, itself. And because there's no uh, filler neck directly into the radiator, so we are just going to have to remove one of the lower radiator hoses off um, typically on some Volkswagens there would be a clip underneath the lower radiator hose area but uh, 
it wouldn't this one on this model it wouldn't be able to drain that much of the coolant so, so we're probably just going to remove uh one of the clamps here over here for the lower radiator hose and drain it from there so after the vehicle has cooled down you want to open up the, the reservoir so now we are just going to remove this clamp to drain from the lower hose here and from the uh they call this i believe the one down here and they call it the the after run uh, coolant pump this uh keeps the coolant circulating after the vehicle is shut off and then you have a, a mechanical water pump or coolant pump uh, on the on the side of the engine i believe ran by the camshaft it uses like a like, like similar to like a, a timing belt so uh, anyhow so uh, we're just gonna remove this now this clamp You may need a, a special tool to uh, to drain from here. This tool to uh, to pull back on the hose here. It is plastic, so you have to be careful. You may need to, to tilt the hose down in order to get uh, the coolant out. So we will let this drain uh, for some time. So now the coolant is all draining, just getting the remainder of the coolant out. Uh, you won't be able to drain absolutely everything from this uh, system. So this is just a, just a basic drain and fill procedure. So, uh, so now I'm just going to reinstall the hose here. into the the T uh, connection making sure everything is in properly and then uh Reinstall the clamp. And 
make sure it's reinstalled in the same uh, position as you uh, uh, took it off. So just make sure you reinstall the hose clamp the same way you had it off so it, uh, it doesn't leak in the future. So uh, I, I measured the coolant and it was roughly three and a half liters that came out close to one US gallon, 3.78 liters. So I'm just going to reinstall the covers now and uh, and, and fill the cooling system up. So I'm just going to be reinstalling the covers back and, uh, and filling up the uh, cooling system and then uh, ble bleeding it out. So now we are going to be filling up the cooling system. I'm using the, the OAM uh, coolant stuff. It says it's for Audi, Volkswagen and Porsche. Uh, it says uh, Euro 2. This is the, the violet uh, pinkish uh, coolant. Uh, just make sure you use the correct coolant for your vehicle. Now if you want you can go to the Volkswagen dealership and just get the G13 coolant if, if you want to be on the safe side. If uh, if you're paranoid or if you just want to use the right stuff, just go to the dealer and just get that. But because uh, I have uh, my local parts supplier uh, on who I, I deal with, so I just got the coolant from them. It's the exact uh, same thing. So as long as it's, it meets the specifications, for your vehicle then it, sh uh, it should be okay uh, otherwise you can just go to the dealership and, and just get the stuff from there so this one is uh, is concentrated it's not a 50 50 uh, pre-mixed so i have to uh i i have to uh to mix uh, the coolant and distilled water with a 50 50 uh, <laughs> ratio just uh just make sure that you don't use regular tap water or uh, or bottled water because they contain uh, minerals and so the minerals can create uh, <laughs> deposits inside the engine block and in the cooling system so you want to make sure that you are using distilled water if you are are, are mixing up the concentrated coolant but if you have pre-mixed coolant then you don't need to worry about it so i'm just looking on the service uh, information here uh, there is one of two ways as as to how you can do this uh, you can do this by using a, a vacuum filled uh, uh, equipment or machine or you can do it the the manual way so uh, today we are going to be doing it the the manual way so it says here uh, <laughs> without VAS 6096 I believe that's the the part number for the vacuum uh, <laughs> machine so um, it says to slowly fill the coolant up to the upper marking in the hatched area on the expansion tank and then close the reservoir and it's saying here uh, to start the engine and keep the engine speed at about 2000 rpm for approximately uh, three minutes allow the engine to run until the radiator fan uh, starts running and it's saying to check the coolant level and fill uh, if necessary when engine is warm the coolant level must be at the top uh, <laughs> marking and when the engine is cooled it must be in the middle of the hatch field
So uh, I was saying earlier that this hose is the uh, <laughs> return line for the, the cooling system. So when you bleed these <laughs> system, it's not like your, your regular uh, <laughs> vehicle. Uh, these cooling systems operate <laughs> differently. And so when you fill the expansion tank, uh, after you have ran the vehicle for some time, uh, you will see a, a steady flow uh, of coolant uh, come through here and, and from underneath. So as soon as you see a, a steady flow of coolant, then uh, th that's how you know that there's no more air in the system. So now I'm going to fill the cooling system up. I have already mixed. 50-50 uh, <laughs> distilled water and, and coolant so I'm going to, to fill it up with that So as I'm filling the cooling system, you, you'll be able to see the air bubbles inside. So as you fill it up, the, uh, <laughs> the level should uh, slowly drop if there's still air uh, in the system. So uh, you just need to keep on filling it up until <laughs> the level stops dropping. Right now you can hear the the gurgling inside. You can hear the burping and the gurgling. I uh, I'm just uh, squeezing on on one of the uh, radiator hoses over here. So you need to squeeze the hose down here, and as you're squeezing, you'll be able to see and and hear the bubbles. And then you can see that the, the coolant level has dropped. So you need to, uh, to, to fill it up uh, some more. So I'm, uh, I'm going to fill it up some more. It says to fill it up uh, slowly. So now I'm going to squeeze the uh, the hose again, just to circulate the coolant through and to get the air out. So once you don't see any more uh, air bubbles, then you should be uh, all good to uh, <laughs> to start the engine.
to, uh, we want to close uh, the tap as it's stated in service information. Uh, usually you're supposed to have it open, but So you're supposed to close the cap as it's stated in service information but uh, on some uh, on on other vehicles the cap is supposed to be open so you can bleed the air out um, so now the engine is running so we are going to rev it up into uh, to to do that for for three minutes and then idle and wait for the cooling fan to come on uh, I did fill the reservoir up uh, a bit more than the maximum because I know that the level is going to drop. Uh, we, we probably have to shut the engine off now and, and, and fill it up uh, some more and, and repeat the process. So I shut the vehicle off uh, temporarily. Uh, I just wanted to fill this up a bit more because it's, it's running low. going to fill this up we are going to close it now so I'm going to start the engine again and I have the heater on full blast, high, on maximum fan speed. So now the engine is running, the coolant is uh, filled up. So we are going to go back inside the vehicle and, and rev the engine up to 2000 and keep it like that for approximately three minutes. So I'm just watching the clock here, uh, 10.13. Okay, 10.14, so at 10.17, uh, we are gonna stop. So it's at 2000 right now. So now the engine is running, uh, we are just going to wait until the cooling fans turn on. Uh, it's idling at the moment. You can see that there is fluid that is running through the uh, <laughs> return line. Hard to see it on camera. So uh, I'm, I'm still running the vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna wait until the cooling fan uh, <laughs> comes on and then it should be okay. Uh, as you can see, w when you had a look at the uh, <laughs> return line, you can see a steady flow of coolant going through there from inside the reservoir. Uh, so if you see a steady flow of coolant, it means that, that all of the air ha has bled out of the system and, and you should be okay. In some instances, I've seen some people, they remove that hose and they put it inside the reservoir so, th so they can watch it and monitor the coolant flow uh, to, to see that a steady stream of coolant is flowing through that hose. So you can do it that way with the expansion tank cap off and monitor the flow of coolant or you can watch it th through that that pipe there 
to, through the expansion tank. So right now the vehicle is running. As I squeeze the hose here, the lower radiator hose, you can see the fluid going through here. So now the cooling fans have uh, have came on, so we should be uh, all good to go now. And you can see uh, a steady flow of uh, a coolant going through. I'm also uh, <laughs> monitoring the the coolant uh, temperature on the scan tool <laughs> through my phone so it, it's probably a good idea to check the temperature just to make sure that it uh, doesn't uh, overheat so also uh, you can uh, monitor the the coolant on the gauge yeah. here you don't uh, have to use the the scan tool uh, if you don't want to because the temperature is right here now after you shut the vehicle off completely, the radiator fans will still be running for some time. So you're going to have to give it some time if the radiator fans are still running. So it's, it's not anything to worry about. Eventually uh, they will uh, turn off after the engine has cooled down. So the cooling fans ha have came on, so I, I should be uh, all good to go. Uh, the cooling system... Uh, has bled now there's no more air in the system I'm just going to go for a road test and and confirm the repair and make sure that I'm getting heat from inside the vehicle make sure the heat is constant and uh, and that should be it that's it for today if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day and take care.